Hey everyone, it's Eric. I'm going to wander into, well, I'm going to wander above politics for about two minutes. So if I could have your ears for two minutes and then we'll go on to the happy, the happy positive Garden Fork radio show. Um, I just wanted to read a quote from FBI director Christopher Wray uh, from last week. And if you're not in the United States, this may apply to you as well. Uh, FBI Director Christopher Wray said Wednesday he stands by the U.S. intelligence agency's assessment that Russia interfered in the 2016 election, and he warned that the Kremlin has not stopped trying to undermine democracy. My view has not changed, which is that Russia attempted to interfere with the last election and that it continues to engage in malign influence operations to this day. It's a threat we need to take extremely seriously and respond to with fierce determination and focus. The way the Russians work, he said, is to identify a divisive issue in the U.S., then use covert and overt means, including fake news and propaganda, to basically sow divisiveness, spin people up on both sides of an issue, and watch us go after each other. And that really bums me out. Um, Garden Fork Radio is like this, there's people on the left and the right and the middle that I get emails from every day. And I'm going to read a bunch of them today, actually, because it's the solo show. But there are people out there that are trying to play us against each other. So if you read an article and you're like, holy cow, or even if it's like, I don't really know if that's true or that's that's outrageous. But oh, um, take a look at Snopes.com. Uh, or one of the news websites, the more boring the website, the more accurate it is likely to be, the more sensational. Uh, I think it's much less uh, of a journalistic website. But uh, you may think this is a little on the left, but NPR has a very good website. Uh, Bloomberg News has a very good website. And the PBS NewsHour and the PBS News Hour has got to be the most boring news in the world, but it's straight down the middle. Um, and you may roll your eyes at the New York Times, but they are the ones that exposed uh, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton's private um, email server. So something to think about there. They uh, they punch the left and the right. Um, so there you go. We're going to step back now from Eric and politics, but... There are people out there that are trying to split us, and I think Garden Fork is kind of a big uniter. Um, I think we believe in doing stuff in our backyards, and we're lucky that we live in a country where we can fire up a chainsaw <laughs> without having to get a permit or something, you know? So, all right, on with the show. Hey, thanks for downloading the show. Thanks for putting up with my uh, three minutes of politics there at the beginning of the show. Uh, if you feel strongly about that, I would love to hear from you. Radio at GardenFork.tv. We're going to take a totally left turn here. We're going to talk about meditation, and then we're going to read some viewer mail. And then we're going to try and guess where our executive producer, Jimmy Goots, is fishing. Because he sent me kind of this cryptic text message with a screen snap of a map. And there might be some GPS coordinates coordinates in there because um, I tried to get him on the show and he said, I'm here. And I'm like, why are you fishing? And I'm at work. So, but that's why he's the executive producer. So ready? Here we go. I, um, as I think everyone knows, I'm big on meditation. I think it's, it's really helped me, uh, average guy, Eric. Um, and I have what I call the uh, squirrel cage cranking in my head like an example is um in brooklyn here parking is at a premium and there is a neighbor who owns two cars and when they pull one of the cars out uh they keep two cars parked on the same side of the road right uh next to each other and when they pull one car out they pull the other car forward to hold the two spots and that just drives me crazy and i don't know if there's much i can do about it besides just kind of looking at them and going you know what you're doing and you know what's wrong. But I'm much better at not letting that grind on me the rest of the day. And I think a big part of that is meditation. So um, Andy, who is the uh, creator and host of the Headspace app, has a daily guided meditation. And he does a little talking at the beginning of the meditation. You can set it for three minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 or 20. 
I do 10 or 15 minutes. Um, I think a goal would be to go to 20 minutes. But um, he does a little talk, and the one recently um, really stuck with me, so I recorded it to the computer, and I'm hoping that Headspace does not want to come over with a giant lawsuit because I'm talking about them constantly. But uh, let me play you this little clip uh, of Andy and what meditation is really simply all about. Let go. Let go. Let go. Yes, but let go. No, but let go. This is the essence of the practice, the journey of meditation, the journey of life to let go with a kind and open heart. Often we want more. We think there must be some magic answer, that there must be some complicated explanation. If we could just receive that, then everything would be okay. And then the mind rallies. The mind tries to think its way out of it. Yeah, but if we can just... Again, the answer is to let go. Or it might resist. No, but what if we... The answer is to see the thinking and to let it go. It's so simple as an idea. And yes, I know how hard it is to actually apply it in that moment. But whenever the practice feels complicated, whenever it feels like there's too much going on, in fact, even in outside of the meditation, just throughout the rest of your life, just to remember there is nothing more complicated about it than this. Just to let go, to see what's happening in the mind, to acknowledge it, to let it go and to come back, whether it's to the breath in meditation or to something else you're doing in everyday life. This is the essence of training the mind. There you go. That's it. Um, as of today, Monday, July 23rd, 2018, if you go to the headspace.com website, it says they're offering 40% off for uh, a year signup. It is a, they have a free trial. I think it's 10 days. They have these great animated videos to walk you through, uh, you know, trying to learn how to meditate. And uh, I'm still learning. What am I in my second year here? Uh, I think I've meditated for 5,000 minutes. You know, the app keeps track and, and tells you that. So that was pretty cool. But yeah, go check it out, headspace.com. I don't make any money on it. I just think it'll allow you, it's allowed me to be a calmer, happier person. And um, in this day and age, as we talked about in the beginning of the show, that can be challenging. <laughs> so what, just the other day, um, the world life has been, despite being positive for the most part, it's been a little crazy. And I wasn't able to schedule uh, a podcast recording with one of my co-hosts. So I just dropped in one of the archive shows. And I didn't record an intro to it. I guess a lot of shows are like, this is a previously recorded show we're going to play for you. The issue for me, and um, I bet Kevin's going to email me about this, but they're all MP3 files. I did not I haven't, I guess I should save them, but I don't export them as a WAV file or an AIF file. And MP3s are kind of an end product. To edit them and then re-export them from your software, you're compressing a super compressed file and the audio quality suffers. But maybe some degraded audio quality in my voice might help, actually. So I didn't know if I should record intros because I said... Uh, read broadcast in the title and in, in the description, the first thing was archive. But nonetheless, uh, some people were rightly confused. Uh, Nicole was one of them. And um, this is not a rare, this is just me um, reading her note. You guys were going on about and on about CFLs. There was something else in the weird in the episode. You mentioned it was April. Is this an old podcast you posted by mistake? Um, so yeah, it's it's it was episode one thirty, and we're at episode uh, one uh, four seventy something now. So yeah, that was a while ago, and it was with uh, Radio Mike, who um, actually will be on the show soon. So um, so sorry about that. Sometimes I think just to kind of keep keep people in the garden fork loop, and to make the i the iTunes algorithm gods happy. Um, 
there are some weeks I just can't get my act together, as we all know. <laughs> so uh, there you go. All right. So just want to talk about that. If you do want to hear another interesting uh, show, Root Simple just had a uh, extended show with uh, Will from the Weekend Homestead talking about fireworks and solar panel and beekeeping. He's been doing, he's been interning or mentoring with a commercial beekeeper in Wisconsin. I talked to him the other day on the phone and I think they checked something like 50 hives uh, the other day in a couple hours. And uh, I guess well, Will will come on again and he'll talk about it, but they really slam through it. They slam through it pretty quick. So uh, just something to think about there. So rootsimple.com or rootsimple on iTunes there. So uh, I got a note from Lisa about the cabbage loopers or loppers. Um, Hi, Eric. I enjoy listening to your podcast. This product has made a huge difference for me in growing kale and brassicas. You do need to reply every five to seven days because the moths do lay more eggs. This is Lisa in New Jersey. And it is the safer brand caterpillar killer for trees, shrubs, and vegetables concentrate number two. That's a Roman numeral two. And uh, safer is a brand um, that has organic sprays. And this is OMRE listed, which is Organic Materials Review Institute. I can't. Uh, someone will correct me on that, but OMRI, O-M-R-I, I see that mentioned a lot in the Fedco seed catalog, and that's an organic certification group. Controls worms, caterpillars on fruits, vegetables, ornaments, and shade trees, tomato hornworm cat caterpillars, gypsy moths, tent caterpillars. Ooh, we have tent caterpillars. I usually spray them with uh, the wasp spray because the, they're way up in the trees. But it is a uh, subspecies of BT, Bacillus Thuringiensis, subspecies Kurtztaki. And by the way, you can use this um, to spray your honeycomb frames that you are going to store for winter because wax moths will get into them. So instead of putting all your honeycomb frames in a deep freezer, taking up space in your basement or your garage or whatever, uh, we have a video, of course, about this on Garden Fork's YouTube channel. But if you uh, spray them with BT and let them dry, you want to get them pretty wet. That does not affect the bees, but if any wax moths lay eggs in there and then the caterpillar of the wax moth starts, the larva starts eating the comb, they will uh, ingest the BT and uh, be disposed of there. So there you go. And then I heard from uh, J.D. Smith uh, after one of our emails went out and said, hey, Eric, we now have a new bee girl, LOL. Set my 12-year-old up with a new nuke today, plus she can drive a backhoe. And that's from JD in Oregon. So what's not to like about that? First of all, 12-year-old girl with a, a nuke is a mini hive that you, uh, it's five frames that you can get from uh, beekeepers that raise bees for sale. And then you drop that into a regular size hive and you nurse them along and get them going. So that's great. And his 12-year-old can... Uh, run a backhoe, which I cannot do. I think that's all about just uh, giving uh, young women hands-on skills and brain skills. I think that is so, so important. Um, the women in my life are, um, I'm like the support team for them and that I'm fine with that. So I just think that's pretty cool. So thanks, JD. Uh, oh, there's an article I want to talk about. Oh, and then I heard from Teresa. And she said, I'm very fortunate that my commute to work is only two miles, so I get through very little of the podcast on my daily commute. So I mainly listen to podcasts while walking my dog, doing exercise, doing chores, falling asleep. I have a set of soft headphones, which I might have listened without bothering my hubby, working jigsaw puzzles and sewing. I have delusions of listening while gardening, but my brown thumb affliction precludes that. Really enjoy the podcast. That's from Teresa in Texas. So how cool was that, huh? You want to see if uh, we have some recent reviews? I don't know. What do you think about that? Um, are you running over to iTunes right now and doing it? I'm not sure. Can you can you write reviews from the phone app yet? I know if you, while this is playing on your iPhone, if you tap or swipe on your um on the image, which is usually a Labrador, and it says GF Radio, um, 
it'll bring up information about Garden Fork, like all the links that I'm talking about today. And uh, you can also go to our iTunes listing. I'll, I'll have to find that out. I'm mangling this, of course, and someone's talking back to the speakers in their car. Uh, no, no new reviews. The most recent ones were DIY Dan and SJ Walton. So please type in Garden Fork Radio on iTunes. Leave a five-star review. Everyone else's podcast asks for it all the time. So uh, I'm going to do that as well. So, all right. We've got this done. We've got this done. I, got, I laid everything out. I'm so organized here today. Um, we're done with that. Oh, I got a, a nice email from Mary. Uh, hi, Eric. Love your podcast. I listen to them when I'm in need of some... I listen when I'm in need of some calm down to earth vibe. Uh, don't listen to the beginning of this one then. <laughs> Sorry, Mary. Um, could be in the car or when I'm cooking or doing stuff around the house. I turned my sister onto the podcast too. Separately, we both heard about the Florida tomato seeds and got some for our 97-year-old dad who's an expert tomato guy. He starts his seeds in the basement every year and has a little tomato plant stand in the front yard of his Ohio home. Yay, Ohio. We are all anxiously waiting for the harvest. Lots of blossoms and some little green tomatoes as I write. I showed my husband your raised bed video. He made a couple for my little herb garden experiment. Definitely a done is better than nothing project. Still in progress. Here's a picture of transplanted sunflower volunteer from my garden. Couldn't bear to pull them out. It's been in the pot for three weeks and has a bud. The vinca is from a volunteer too. Spilled over from the window box. There's a picture that she has sent with it. Looks like a golden retriever. Look forward to your sunflower transplant video. Thanks for your podcast. That's from Mary. So yeah, go check that out. Uh, coming out today, the same time that this podcast rolls out, is a new video. And I would appreciate it if you would go over to YouTube and watch it. All right? Um, that way, we will make the uh, algorithm gods at YouTube happy. Um, the trick with... Um, YouTube is if I can get a thousand views on a video in the first 24 hours, it will rank it higher in the YouTube algorithm and show it to more of my subscribers and non-subscribers. And this Monday, that's today, there's going to be a video about what is the best tomato trellis. At least my opinion of what's the best um, tomato trellis. So there'll be a link right here in the iTunes description for that, so just tap or swipe on the Garden Fork Radio icon on your phone and hit the link to go watch that video. And that would make me happy. And if you could watch more than one video, that makes the algorithm even more happy. So there you go. Hey, if you happen to use Amazon for some of your shopping, uh, I'm all about shopping local. Um, I kind of make a mix and match of stuff I need. If I need something very specific, uh, I actually will go online and try and find it because at the store it might not have the thing I really need. But we have a Amazon shopping page directly on Amazon. It is amazon.com slash shop slash garden fork. And right there I list a bunch of items I think are really handy to have. Uh, the power tools I use, I use these Bosch 12 volt cordless drill driver set which is amazing. It's not cheap. It is amazing. Uh, and a bunch of other stuff, some, uh, you know, generator, uh, wind-up radios, beekeeping stuff, tools I like. The world of Eric, basically. Amazon.com slash shop slash garden fork. I read the New York Times, and I like a lot of the articles. Um, I tend to skip past the front page because it's just kind of depressing these days um but there is a uh the science section is amazing i think um oh and by the way smithsonian has a great website smithsonian.com they have really really interesting uh blog posts that they're written several times a day so i just started reading those those are really good but the new york times has a science article that says, you should actually send that thank you note you've been meaning to write. Big hint, Eric. Uh, I owe a bunch of our new patrons from our Patreon campaign thank you notes. Um, I'm about a month and a half late on that. So if you are listening and you are a Patreon patron, thank you very much. And um, you can learn more about that in our show notes here. But anyway, new research showed the recipients of an emailed expression of gratitude felt much more ecstatic than the writers expected. An emailed expression, that's interesting because I actually like 
paper. I think paper thank you notes are even better, but here we go. Dear reader, we want to let you know we are grateful that you're taking the time to click on this headline because without you reading the story, what's the point? We're now going to use your precious time to share a surprising new finding. People like getting thank you notes. Okay, it's not that surprising. But what did surprise two psychologists as they attempted to get the bottom of why so, so few people actually send thank yous is that many people totally miscalibrate the effect of an appreciative email. They underestimate the positive feelings it will make. I love getting emails from you guys. It's radio at gardenfork.tv. They think it's not going to be that big of a deal, said Amit Kumar, a professor at the University of Texas at Austin who studies well-being. They also overestimate how insincere the note may appear and how uncomfortable it will make the recipient feel, their study found. But after receiving thank you notes and filling out questionnaires about how it felt to get them, many said they were ecstatic, scoring the happiness rating at four of five. The senders typically guessed, guessed they'd evoke a three. To be clear, the notes in question were not the typical thanks for the Amazon gift card. Rather, the 100 or so participants in each of the four experiments were, write, were asked to write a short gratitude letter to a person who had affected them in some way. Sample letters included missives appreciation of fellow students and friends who offered guidance through their college admission process, job searches, and tough times. In lab experiments, Dr. Kumar observed that it took the subjects less than five minutes to write those letters. So there you go. I have been wanting to write a thank you note to my uh, seventh grade homeroom teacher and science teacher, uh, Dr. Stanley Indermuley, who uh, was in was Sussex, Wisconsin, I believe is the town where I went to middle school. And... I can't find him online, which is not surprising because he's probably an older gentleman now. I thought there might be like a alumni listing at the middle school's website or something, but there isn't. But anyway, if anyone knows him, uh, it was Templeton Middle School and uh, Stanley Intermuley, science teacher and homeroom teacher and an influence on me, even though he may not have realized that. So thank you, sir. Thank you for taking the time to... Uh, what would we call that? Uh, hey, come here. I want to talk to you about something. And then uh, a couple talks like that were, um, were great. They were uh, life-changing. So let's just say that. All right. So anything else going on? I've talked for 17 minutes, it says there. That's okay for a podcast, I think. What do you guys think? Rick is getting dental work done today. Uh, and uh, I, he'll share with you if he wants how much it's going to cost because it was a jaw dropper when he said, you know, how much is this costing? Uh, he would much rather be here with us today. And um, I got some interesting things coming out. I wanted to talk a little bit about a chainsaw video I made and then I uh, actually took back down because I found I, I made a big mistake in it. So uh, a newer updated one will be coming out. So... And here, I want to hear from you guys, all right? Radio at gardenfork.tv. So go thank you, send those thank you notes, and um, make it a great day, all right? See ya. Garden Fork Radio's executive producer is Jimmy Goots of hollowbooks.com, and our music is licensed from uniquetracks.com. Thank you.